Aloha! And welcome to another episode of Seeker Tiki Escapes. We're so excited to have you guys. Today we're in Northeast Tacoma, Washington at the Crow's Nest Lounge, which is owned by Michael and Susan right here. So let's check it out. this amazing tiki bar and how it's come to look like this because of course many tiki bars have a journey that they're on. A so, long journey. A long journey. So tell me um, what was this space before uh, you guys imagined this tiki bar? When we first came in here the people had already been gone four years so this was empty. So when I first walked in there was, you'll see the tiki outside the door, it was sitting there dilapidated for a day. And there was a big sign that said wet bar. And Michael was at work at Warehouser, and I looked over and I said, oh, I think this might be it. And I said, This will be the tiki bar. <laughs> you could visualize that already. Yes, that's yeah. why we had bamboo floor laid in. It was yeah, carpet. So it's a even through the gray shag carpet. Oh. 80s shag. Oh, oh so. the best. And this is why we bought it. This little guy right here. <laughs> that was laying outside. Laying of the house. there on the corner. When I walked over, I saw someone's got to help it. True story, the daughter showed up here, I don't know, 10 years after we lived here. Mm -hmm. This was from the Philippines, and it was given to her parents before they left after they got married as a good luck charm yeah. for them. So what came next? You bought the house, you decided this was going to be, this would Foreign. be a good space. Okay. This was bamboo in here, and, mm -hmm. and then came the everything I had collected since 1981. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a lot of tiki here. mugs in here, and that's what we hear a lot. It's about the people start collecting, and then they need to have a house for their collection. As far as kind of the bigger pieces, um, what made you make the decision on like the ceiling and the bar placement? What were kind of your inspiration for that? The ceiling color we thought was similar to yours. That's why we painted it. Well, from it, your bar, we saw that you guys did that. Yeah, and I go. That's the color. It may not be the same color, sorry. It's not quite the same color, but that's okay because it's beautiful. Thank you. And I always approve of a, of a turquoise ceiling. So. And, and it actually works really well in here. We actually like color, so, oh my. So that wall is sand. Okay. <laughs> and then this wall, we just randomly picked out, and then I painted all the palm leaves. Well, the palm leaves are great. They give some, it some good texture. And I feel like um, when people are watching videos on how to kind of put their bar together, knowing things like creating texture is a big thing. So you yes. can look across the room and you people might not even see it right away. So one of my first big tiki mugs was... Harvey's. Harvey's. Top of the wheel. I wanted that mug really bad. And when was that? 87? Well, you got it at Harvey's in 87. Yeah. That's right. That's 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 some serious legit tiki heritage. Well, what happened was I asked the waitress for it and I said how much cuz most of the mugs I did get from places you pay at the time $6, you got your drink in it, you drank mm -hmm. and took the yeah. mug home with you. She said, "Sure, it's $15 cash." And I go, "Here." And I gave it to her. So then the next waitress came over cuz me and my girlfriend were sitting there drinking and I go, "Oh, can you wrap this up for me?" And she goes, "Those aren't for sale. They never leave the bar." And I sat there and I looked at my friend, I went, oh. So she walked around the corner and I looked around the corner and they were laughing and they had my money. So I took the bowl, dumped everything out onto the table and walked out <laughs> from the top floor and went down to the garage <laughs> and put it in my friend's trunk. That's my favorite mug of all of these I have. First 
time I shot with you, I actually Googled how to pronounce Spain. <laughs> but it depends on how you spell it, how, what you're gonna get. How do I usually start this anyway? <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Swain, photographer. I am here with Misdemeanor, and uh, we just finished up our shoot, so we are now uh, sitting here chit-chatting, and you're gonna be watching some of the shoot. So I want you to tell me, first of all, because I, I, I saw the dress, and I asked you about the dress. So you made this dress like this week. Yes. Tell me about this dress. <laughs> so I do a lot of costuming for the local theaters, mm -hmm. so I am a sewist, um, and I like my passion is to collect old 40s, 50s, 60s patterns and try to recreate them. And That's fun. Yeah, this particular one was missing instructions, so that kept me up at night. <laughs> But it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I like it when you finally get it done and mm. you have that finished product. And you're like, I did something. And, and, it, and it, did you buy that pattern the way it is or? Yeah. So I bought the pattern pieces, just the pattern pieces. And then I was able to Google what the dress looked like online, but no gotcha. instructions. So I gotcha. <laughs> was oh, able to awesome. cut it out. And that's the, that's the part you can't really make up. So. So your hairpiece, where is your hairpiece from? I love that whole like little tea thing. I actually there. got this from uh, Jezebel's Fascination off of Etsy um, and I love it. I love it yeah, so much. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> I, like, I like the vampire tea. The little there. tea. I know, they... it's, like, it's like a year round thing. It's like <laughs> Halloween and then outside Halloween. Well, it goes with the fabric. If you look closely enough, um, there's little Venus fly traps. Oh like yeah. Little, little... I thought that was just like a random pattern. It's yeah, it's Those kind of a hidden in the, oh, okay. amongst yeah. the tiki print. That is pretty yeah, cool. I like that. Goes. So, so speaking of tiki print, when, when did you like discover tiki? When, what was your discovery moment? Three years ago. I lived in Hawaii, maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I fell in love with it there, but I didn't know it was like a whole thing. Right. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that it was a passion other people yeah. shared. I just, you know, it was how you lived out there. Um, so finding it and it's kind of associated with the pinup world mm -hmm. and the vintage world uh, was pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It's like rediscovering. It's yeah. <laughs> and it's a whole new set of wardrobe as well. So it's not the worst thing. Right? I mean, <laughs> come on. There's never a bad time to dress up. Um, what is it you like the most about Tiki? Um, I like the ocean vibes. I like that it mm. takes you to Polynesia, to Hawaii, mm. and it kind of makes you feel like you're on vacation, like you can relax, you can chill. I love that with the clothes and that's, yeah, it feels like vacation. Like a beach you feel. Yes, yeah, always, yeah, yeah. no matter where you're at, I love it. There's a story behind this Havana piece. The Havana Club piece. So I did work in Trinidad in 2002, and I was in Trinidad for two weeks a month for about six months. And in that time, I learned that you can get Havana Club in a duty-free shop mm -hmm. for $10 US. <laughs> and I got a very handy uh, box that held six bottles at a time. So I did that for six months. So I was going through and bringing back a total of about 36 bottles. I mean, I had it lined up, I was giving away as Christmas presents. We didn't know better. <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, <laughs> because how was I getting away with that? How was I getting through Miami? Well, luckily the flight from Trinidad arrived at the same time from a uh, flight from Bogota. And with my uh, Richie Cunningham good looks, I was able to kind of just walk right by. And I, you know, every, and then I would just pack up my duty free box and go back to Trinidad and I did this. It was only one time I was stopped and that was in Chicago. It was after 9-11, course and they were kind of doing random checks and in a Chicago airport someone says hey this is Cuban I said oh well I gotta do a duty-free shot and <laughs> just let me go on back so and so uh, I told the story to someone and they said well you're a rum runner <laughs> oh. oh so we had an artist friend who did uh, artwork on cabinet doors and she painted this and besides the Havana Club it says all over at rum runner rum runner rum runner so.
Well, Michael, I love the fact that your tiki bar is in your living room. Like we can literally like watch television as we're drinking tiki cocktails. Or an active volcano as the case may be. As an act, or we're watching an active volcano actually on the television. And I'll tell you what, Michael, I've had many, many, many drinks here. <laughs> We've done a lot of labs. We've done a lot of uh, comparison tastings. I'm always excited to see what drink you're gonna make me. So for this episode of Secret Tiki Escapes, what are you gonna make up? I'm gonna be making you a Royal Hawaiian and- Like the, the Royal Hawaiian? The Royal Hawaiian, in this case from the 1998 original first edition Grog Law. Oh, can I see that? And I- Is this the first one? It is. So we've been making these and going back and forth. In fact, the- So delish. Perfect balance of gin. So this is a gin drink. It is a gin drink. All right, well, now I'm very curious. The Royal Hawaiian was actually started at the Moana Hotel when they would do Hawaiian calls. They would actually serve this there. So if you are listening to some of the recordings of Hawaiian calls, uh, yeah. chances are the people that are there were drinking one of these. So what first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a metal shaker and I'm gonna add some cubed ice. I'll get about this. I'm going to be making two drinks today. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in three ounces of fresh pineapple juice. I don't have a fresh pineapple juice, but I have the Dole, which is a very good simulation. As have you as, ever seen that? Well, I guess you, you open the can and you you know don't let it sit in the can. After you open the can and, and you want to get if you want to keep it, put it in glass, put it in the refrigerator. It'll last for a long time. Do not leave it in the don't leave it in the can. You don't want that metal. You never hear a cocktail saying like yeah that we need some some stale pineapple juice <laughs> it's always fresh pineapple juice picky 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 and i am going to add now one ounce of fresh lemon juice which i did uh, juice today and put it in a glass container so let's make sure you get this right definitely lemon juice not lime juice it just doesn't quite work the same now we're going to add a little bit of spice i'm going to add a, just a bit of orgeat um, I'm gonna add, now what would you say, Ray? Orjat or Orje? Orja. Orja. Think of Zsa Zsa Gabor. Yeah, but actually Blair Reynolds is, 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 is more like Orj. <laughs> so I don't know, I say Orja. So in this case, I put in a quarter ounce of Orja, and now I'm going to add the final component, which is gin. I'm gonna add three ounces of gin. Three ounces of gin. And today we're using Citadel, which is a French gin. I've used Three Wolves, uh, traditional or Three Wolves Navy Strength. And I've used Tangeray before, but I really do like the, the, the smooth balance of this French gin. And a little trick about this is, if this worked out well, yep, there it goes, and I am making the mess. If you're working with lemon and pineapple and you do a shake drink, it does the foam. Oh yeah. Again, if you're doing a fizz drink. Look at that. You're not using egg white, you're, you're coming up with the, with the fizz. And let's garnish it with a slice of lemon peel and a cherry. So, uh, Royal Hawaiian. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Like mom used to make. Mm. It's very crisp and very light. But there's, a, but there's a little bite to it, and that must be the pineapple juice. It's a bit of the pineapple, the lemon tries to balance it up with the Gin is there, but it's not that strong, strong gin punch. Yeah. And the orgeat is the sort of thing that you gotta watch with the balance because it could actually take over. Does you know, a lot goes a uh, little goes a long way. A little goes a long way. Good job, Blair. Yeah, well good job making these cocktails. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for coming, Ray. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, there are people that look at this grog log and had you write in your grog log, like, well, we did it since 1998. Uh, so this is your first tiki bar. This that is you our very had. first tiki bar that we did have. Because like did. I was just saying, everyone needs to have a spare tiki bar with extra chairs. Just but it's the parlor. Well, we're in the parlor now. That's right. That way, when you get so many people in the main tiki bar, you could open up and bust out the second tiki That's bar. That's right. Yeah, everything just kind of came together. We were looking for furniture and found this couple who had been collecting furniture forever. So this is Paul Frankel, and they had it stored away in a horrible place. But it's okay. It was a, it story, looks great. It was a big, big story storage. Two story corrugated metal across from an airport. This was the original fabric 80 years ago from it's Paul really Frankel. We put this on. It's it's silk. Unfortunately, because of where they stored it. It had black mold in it, so everything had to be replaced. They had the coils yeah. all tied together, you know, like Wait Victorian period. 
<laughs> wait a ton. <laughs> Couldn't use the fabric, of course. And so it was nice that the, the guys there said, here's two pillows and this is the original fabric. What I want to know, of course, Jim, is is this amazing presence that's been sitting in the Tiki Bar since I came in today. Uh, this is a new piece that they had commissioned by you, is that correct? Yes, uh, did it, we actually put it in last week. But it, but it wasn't so much commission as the fact that Susan and Jim here actually designed it on a napkin. I was uh, telling my studio. wonderful busty woman about Michael. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm totally good with that concept. But the inspiration yeah. for her was based upon a piece Jim uh, did of a Cthulhu, which was just amazing uh -huh. tentacles around the and Susan wanted to do the same thing but with a mermaid so that's why the hair is as intricate as it is. The trick is to find the four fish in the hair. They are there, you just have to find them. Amazing. But, and her name is, when Jig came up with the name, the perfect name for her, this is Merdusa. Well and originally they wanted a tiki. They, they were talking about a tiki that would go up against this post here but and they talked about the the mermaid idea, and we made it happen. And I love the fact that it's it's unique. Uh, I mean, obviously, you have many many tiki's, and, and in my opinion, you can't have a tiki bar without tiki's. Uh, <laughs> but in this instance, like instead of like having the main focal piece just be another tiki, you've 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 stepped up the game. I love it. Ken, uh, Ken Pleasant made this artist-proof piece even before he had the brand back from Whitco Decor. Mm -hmm. So we were lucky enough to get this, and we actually got it from Sven Kirsten at a Sven Kirsten rate. <laughs> Good for you, Sven. Some of these pieces I've seen, you know, in pictures, and I didn't realize like the true size of some of these. We so. saved this one. Oh, yeah. this, um, this is the Bosco um, Rescue. Yeah. That's a bo oh wait, 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 a Bosco Res rescue. rescue. Yes. This couple up here decided not to do tiki. They went with redesigning their home, and rebuilt it to be brutalist. Brutalist model. Brutalist model. Okay. It's just concrete yeah. and steel. Everything's gray and mm -hmm. black. So this poor Poor Tiki it's was tied up. Foot, was it's tied gotta up. be six foot two. It he is. was tied against a fence, waterlogged for three years. So Mr. Just a Bosco thrown out on a field. You know, no big deal. Tied, she was chained up. <laughs> because they didn't want to fall in the dark. Four or six of us to load him into our truck, and he stayed in our garage drying out for about three years. But he years. is chained to the wall. But he is still chained to the wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want that to fall on me. Oh, even though we don't have a dog. Aww, so but, this is how a lot of the furniture just came about. That's like, that's original Paul Frankel chairs yeah. back there. Oh, except for the stuff. But everything, um, one of the first Tiki's we acquired was Bosco's Tiki Bob in the corner there. Yeah. And that started also the center of, okay, what are we going to do? And yeah. especially with the new electronics and things you can do with the flames and... So that helped us bring all this kind of together. Did you guys have a, any sort of an inspiration when you started, or was it just collecting things you loved? Collecting things we loved. Yeah. Yeah. That was yes. a good way of saying it, it because we, it's like, you know, if you come sometimes you come down in the morning and you look around going, what are we doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at the same time, then you get a chance and you take a look at piece by piece, and each piece has a story. Mm -hmm. But like watching when you guys thrift into your things and you go, oh. This it's like oh she's like <laughs> this is not it'll work. This, this is one little now. item will work. Yeah. Like my little tiki kitty. And stuff the tiki like kitty. I'm a little jealous. Lovely. We are enjoying ourselves. You guys are of course consummate hosts. Thank you. Thanks for your time today. Thank well, you very you're much. Always for welcome. Glad to see you both fine. I know back. it's been a while. I hope you do. We have a guest room. <laughs> It's a tiki guest room. It's a tiki guest room. <laughs> From all of us at Secret Tiki Escapes to all of you. Mahalo! Mahalo!